Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back for another episode of Hidarashi. Today we are checking out episode 14 of the Dodd Entertaining Art. Well, episode 14, part uh, 3 of the Dodd Entertaining Art. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, okay, what happened last time? Uh, we finally caught up to um where the network finished, so this is all all brand new stuff coming. Um, Rita has a jump pointed at her. Possibility that she lives, maybe. Um, though still doubtful. Hanyu is currently captured. Something I didn't really think about um, in the end of last episode's discussion was that um, if they loop again, then when they go transport it back to the Sea of Fragments, um, at least for Satoko, She's trying to, like, pop in with, uh, and see Hanyu, I think. So that could be an interesting interaction if that happens. I don't know if, uh, I mean, Rita shouldn't end there unless Feathering lets her, right? So, I don't know, that's something cool. Um, we'll see how this plays out. I think it'll either be, like, one final fragment where, uh, Rita puts it all. Maybe, like, they speed run some stuff, like, in Neko. I do a chapter of Satoko winning a bit. Um, there's a, there's a couple options. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how they tackle this. Um, but yeah, should be fun either way. Hopefully, what do we got today? Second last snack. It's this thing. What is it? I don't know. We had a variant of this last time. I remember. It looks like a hash brown, but it's not. I forgot what it's called though. I think last time it was like scallop something. Was this? Uh, plum zara zarame senbai. Yeah, it was a senbai. We had a scallop last time. This one's plum, I guess. This crunchy Japanese snack uses flavor of sweet and sour plum to create a balanced flavor, while having a slightly rougher and more rusted texture to further enhance the experience. Okay, I mean, I kind of liked the last time, but plum is like. Such a different <laughs> different flavor profile than uh than scallops. Interesting smell. Ooh, this one's sugary. Last time it just looked like a hash brown. This looks like a hash brown with sugar on it. That is plum. First it tastes like rice. Then it slowly transforms to plum. It's very trippy. I haven't eaten a plum in so long now that I think about it. I think it's good though. <laughs> it's very trippy. Anyways, no more stalling. Eat while watching. Maybe. <laughs> um... So once again, my episode is 23 minutes, 47 seconds long, like last time, so it's not the usual. That's because it skips the Katotawa um, part of the studio logo. So if yours does have Katotawa and is 23 minutes, 50 seconds long, just start your syncage time um, right after that's finished. But yeah, let's uh, start the episode, get your copy ready. We'll talk about it after. And yeah, episode 14 in 3... Two, one, go! No sound. Beautiful. Okay. Oh. Okay. We're restarting that scene. <laughs> the meal is frozen in place. <laughs> Self-report Toto at her peak. <laughs> she just gonna shoot everyone? Oh man. Imagine Chia walking into there.
Yay, third time's the charm. Will it happen? Whoa! Rena! Oh, okay. Well, okay, well, that answers my question. It, they did not stay in this arc. I believed in Rena's speed, dude. Maybe I was overestimating. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Okay, one possibility down, so it's not gonna happen in that arc. Fair enough. Or that fragment. Alright, let's see if Satoto meets Hanyu. So crunchy. <laughs> My teeth. And sweet. See, well, it does show them. Okay, so they are battling in the Sea of Fragments, so that might happen now. And I still think the scene with Satoko reaching out to Rita is probably real Toko, not evil Toko, trying to break free. So this all should be coming to fruition soon, is including New Drip. New Drip last episode confirmed, man. They're gonna solve this problem, then they're gonna flash forward to the future. Confirmed by myself. What? Subtitles suck, it said go. Hidrashi no, not Sotsu. Oh, we're looping back here. Interesting, so Rita didn't meet Hanyu. And I don't think Satoko's going to either. Uh oh, where is she? Where is she? I'm nervous. Not even bunny apples or apple rabbits can help. See? This is what happened. Satoko thought it was an advantage. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh! Fast! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Don't look, guys! Rita just died. That was fast, dude. <laughs> I thought for a second maybe Satoko didn't like make it to that loop right away. But obviously not. <laughs> They're just chilling in the water, dude. Don't look, guys. Dude, I feel bad for them <laughs> once they realize. Too much of a shock. <laughs> okay, so they are montaging it. Okay, that's what I thought one of the options was since we're limited on time. So right now, those two are friends until their consciousness light merges in. Yeah. <laughs> And they merged, like, I just had a similar time. Though I thought Rita would be faster. Jesus. Oh. Ew. I do not need to see that. Censor? Uncensored? Oh, God. <laughs> With the bat bat into the rice patties. Hey, we saw a death like this kinda. In uh the Satoko arc and go. They both died 
dropping into the rice paddies, right? <laughs> Oof. Oh, God. It's actually so brutal. And they're not censoring it because it's not gory. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Good transition. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. That's disgusting. What? Bruh. Han you do something. <laughs> this is just making me... I mean, I like gore, but Jesus Christ, this is hard actually to watch. Yo, librarian, help! Or cashier, I guess. <laughs> oh. Oh. Transition. <laughs> Blot. Well, I mean, Rita shouldn't be able to beat Satoko in combat, though. She's definitely trained! No, random guy. <laughs> oh, no. Tatano, you're still in town, right? Save us! You're the only one! Oh, no. Don't get involved, guys. Well, Rita only needs one kill, and then she wins. <laughs> well, that's a little. Oh, God. We're in Lucia. Your reputation, Rita. I mean, I get that. I am not a studier. Oh. <laughs> that may be not to this extent. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, when? Maybe. I don't know if Rita has it in her to kill Satoko. <laughs> what? I mean, I could comment about this situation, but, like, I feel like I've done a bunch. It's just rough and unfortunate. <laughs> Boom. It's off. Fat kick. Hey, it's the special room. <laughs> oh, strats. Hey, you're stealing Katie and Renner's clout. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though.
Last time bat one. <laughs> really? <laughs> so Dr. Jensen definitely worded it better than just saying, I hate studying. <laughs> Does not help. <laughs> oh, man. This looks so good, though. Boom. Ooh. One kill, Rita. One kill, and she wins. <laughs> but Bat always beats Cleaver. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Dude, I thought it was over somehow. <laughs> oh, man. She made herself a bed. My ennui. Boredom, I guess. Oh! The cream puffs are kicking in! Finally! Uh-oh. <laughs> Finally! She just has bad digestion! Oh, shit. Oh, never mind. But it definitely seems like it was gonna be a setup for Rika Hanyu feathering, or you know, you know what I mean, fighting in two worlds, two times. Team Miracle. True. Oh, that's a wind con. Just got feathering out of here. Still another episode left. Can't see Rita winning yet. Oh. <laughs> oh. Bra. <laughs> that looks so good. Holy shit. Now that's some style points. Hey. Oh yeah, she starts the shard. Whoa. Close. <laughs> oh. I guess that sword is just, uh, there's only one of it in loops. Uh, wait, what's happening? Transforming? <laughs> what the heck? New drip? <laughs> she was keeping it at the dump. So they're just going through fragments. 
not even like looping anymore. They're just transitioning. It's not just like smooth like editing transitions. Hey, that's the ridge Rena lives. Oh, Rena is when she dies. <laughs> well, Satoto does have the full power. Yo! <laughs> hey, she's wearing the feather. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. Rita's Hanyu drip. She's rocking the feathering drip. I will say, Rita looking a little more fly. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> this is so funny in a good way. Oh, you mean every? Oh, they're talking about the marker race. <laughs> Final oh ho ho ho. Hey, Sajoko, be careful not to kill her. <laughs> oh my god. The club callback? What is happening? In her normal voice. This is really like Renovers Keiji in a way. Where Satoko is Rena? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Yo, she's trying to break it or absorb it, maybe. Oh, it's gone. Oh no, it's combined. No, I mean, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so smooth. <laughs> oh, not the phone. So they're not doing it on their own will. It must be by using all this, uh, Witch powers, or is it feathering? <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> Good description, feathering. It's the bridge, the Toko bridge. <laughs> oh, why is the bridge so shaky? She's not gonna do it, bro. <laughs> it's Keiichi versus Rena, kinda.
Dude, they're trying to... Nah. They're trying to team up and come after you. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Plus Hanyu? That should be enough. Maybe. Oh! One more time! Hey! Whoa! Uh-huh! I need, I need a little more than just pure willpower. It's not an equal fight like Satoko. Dude, that's... <laughs> Alright. Well, it looks like the... I mean, there's probably going to be a bit more, but it looks like the confrontation is done. Between Satoko and Rika, almost. You know, they're going to, like... They're not going to kill each other. I think that's for sure. It would be funny, though, if Rika does kill Satoko. And I'll explain it in the post-episode. Just because it kind of can work with knowledge of Umineko a bit. But maybe not. We'll see. That's funny, dude. <laughs> Actual Dragon Ball Z fight. Surprised that, I mean, to be fair, Satoko was, like, hard winning. Because she has to hard win. She's actually at a disadvantage when it comes to this. Because she can't even lose once, right? And Rita doesn't even need to use the sword. If she can just kill Satoko, then her deal with Feathering would fuck her. But she, Rita doesn't know anything about Feathering, so... Next time, final episode. Alright, thank you for watching. Let's just get right into this. That that was that was a good episode, man. <laughs> there were only a few solutions I could think of of how they would play it, so this is how they're doing the bid confrontation. We'll definitely talk more about it in the the series review, which will be posted sometime after we finish this. Because I am sure, I haven't looked, I, I, I honestly don't know what people think of this, but I honest, I do think it's probably a split, a split between people liking and not liking it, for sure. Because <laughs> it's, it's a very different approach of how to do things. But, execution-wise, whether you like the idea they're going with or not, it's pretty fun, man. It's pretty fun. Anyway, let's start this off. So, we get right back to the end of Neko. You know, one of my theories last episode was like, oh, with, with the short episode time, if they're not doing, like, quick deaths or, like, one or two, like, slow loops, then, like, maybe it's possible just because, you know, the very last scene in last episode, Rena looked very close to Satoko, Maybe the friends could restrain Satoko, and uh, the fragment might end somewhere like with this one. But nope, literally one minute in, Satoko just shoots Rita and herself. <laughs> and they did not stop her, so <laughs> there goes that. But, yeah. Then, what's happening? Ah, oh, we start the death montage. Okay, I, I gotta say... Um, first couple deaths were so brutal, dude. It was really hard to look at, which is fun. Fork in throat was really gross. <laughs> Just like, oh, yeah, dude. Fork in throat into burning pan kill into beating until a disgusting face. Ah. On it, like, it's funny because they didn't censor this stuff, but in some ways, I think it's grosser than, like, the beheading stuff. Just to, like, <laughs> seeing Rita's face all bruised up like that is hard. The pan thing just, 
imagining it as painful and fork and throat is just I guess just because it's like a it's a fork, right? Using unorthodox weapons always makes uh seems more brutal, usually, in my opinion. But yeah, then you get all this transition stuff. So first I thought it was just this is actually the amount of times Satoko has kill Rita. And then is it like it's kinda weird. Cause it seems like it kinda like it that um this is just Satoko killing Rita over and over again. But at some point it kind of turns more like they're just floating through different loops without um one of them dying. Either from I thought feathering or just their powers or how fast they're looping is kind of like messing up the flow of the world. And it kind of starts like when Rita punches back or blocks the attack back. Because <clears throat> it doesn't really make sense why Satoko would be on the stage with Rita if it was like a loop where their personality. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm dying. It's, it's the fort in throat scene. But in reality, it's that plum snack, dude. But yeah, it doesn't seem like they're dying, is what I wanted to say. For the most part. So it's either, like, transitions like that. Or, Satoko is just killing Rika every time. There's the thing with this, I was mentioning it in the credits, but if you think about it. Well, Satoko obviously has the overwhelming advantage. When it comes to something like this, where it's all out brawling, Satoko is actually heavily under advantaged besides i mean she does have a lot of training she probably prepared a lot um physically and stuff so she should be better combat oriented than um rika but if she loses one she's out and i know like later on we get the sword stuff but rika doesn't even need to use the sword because featherine's um condition if satoko loses it dies first then she she loses anyways so so it's just rough stuff, man. But anyways, uh, I kind of got lost in thought. Okay, fork and throat, great. Pan, great. Punching till Rita's a bloody pulp, great. <laughs> Dude, the book one is hilarious. Oh yeah, the bag into punching was funny. The book, just beating her with a book. Oh man. When Rita starts fighting back, though. It's really hype pun. I mean, what can I say, dude? Cha there's, a, there's a lot of things. Rita throwing the chair at Satoko. Um, maybe a shout out to the iconic racing. And then we get... Wait. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, what about what they're saying? I mean, they're just finally airing out these problems that they weren't able to um talk about. I gave my stance a lot. I think it's... Um, both their faults in a way, and part fault of St. Lucia, just because it's such a intense, um, I, I don't know. Basically, it's both their faults. <laughs> like, for Satoko, I know she hates studying, and she probably could have worded it better just because just she's saying she hates studying. It makes it really seem like she's, like, the wrong one. But, you know, Rika is really pushy about it. And some people just aren't good studiers, like me. So I kind of sympathize with her. And it's just her natural personality that she can't blend in with the academy. So there is, like, natural faults where Satoko just can't thrive in the academy. Um, and despite Rita saying, oh, um, you keep, like, putting yourself lower than me. It's not like I wanted to not help you. You just wouldn't take it. Oh, I'm sure... You just didn't like my friend, which truth in all of that. But as we saw, Rita did become pretty hard to approach. And she probably, and there's truth in Satoko's words about, you know, her friends not liking her and stuff too. So complicated. Though, you know, it's also Satoko's fault because, again, truth. She probably didn't like the friends. She didn't like other people spending time with Rita. Um... She put herself low. Like, it's just... It's literally, like, 50-50 for me. I don't know. Blame also St. Lucia. This is F that place. Dude, I saw a hilarious meme the other day. It just came on my recommendation. And it's just, like... <laughs> it's, like, Shion and Jay from Umineto and uh, Satoko just, like, 
on a plane and, and they just bomb St. Lucia with like happy music and you just see Rita down below like with a <laughs> with a sad face. <laughs> it was so good, man. That place is just cursed. It it's actually just cursed. But anyways, back to the scene. Yeah. But it's nice to finally see them airing out um their differences because they kind of like talked about it, but they mainly keep it bottled up when they were interacting in St. Lucia, so this is all the repressed anger. Maybe if they get it out of themselves, they can uh mate up. <laughs> then we get this scene. Um the the rooftop scene, obviously reference to Sumi Horoboshi's climate with Keiichi versus Rena. And then, it, it, you know, it kind of dawned on me how much this fight is like Keiichi versus Rena. Obviously, Satoko being Rena, Rita being Keiichi. Obviously, the context is different, but it is Satoko. Um, you, you know, no matter who you agree with on the issue, whether you lean more to Rita or Satoko's side, Satoko has obviously changed. We've seen that a couple episodes ago. Um, Evil Toko has risen. She's trapping people in a murderous plan to keep Rita. She's twisted. Um, and Rita, well, she's also, like, just beating the shit out of her. She's also, um, I mean, she, it, it, I don't know. It seems more like Keiichi trying to, like, even though it might not be intended through the fight right now, it does seem like she's trying to bring Satoko, like, back to reality, kinda. But, like, it, it's not it's not the same with Keiichi, where he was purposely doing it, but by the end of the episode, um, when they're bantering well in Super Saiyan form, it does really seem like Keiichi and Rena. Uh, but we'll talk about that. But yeah, seeing that scene was very funny. And it, obviously it was purposeful, not just because it's an iconic scene, but I'm sure the the directors were trying to also showcase that this was a similar, comparable um, battle. I think, in my opinion. Little cool art style with the style of the ending. <laughs> with the with them battling. We got Hanyu trying to break out, which Feathering easily puts a stop to. Um, though I'm sure... I'm sure we're going to start seeing some fighting next episode. Probably, like, maybe with Rik and Satoko helping, because... I can't really see Hanyu beating Feathering. It's not It's not the same as Satoko versus Rika. Feathering should be at a much higher plane. Though, to be fair, she does... Hanyu is a part of Feathering, so she might be, like, stronger than... Like, I don't know how strong Hanyu is. I, I, I kind of assume that she's weaker than, like, Burncasto. Like, fully grown Burncasto, but... Who, who is, like, way weaker than Feathering. But, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Hanyu is, like, the second strongest witch we've seen. Talking from Uminako experience, of course. Oh, then we get such a smooth... Dude, I love the Satoko kill. Knocking Rita off and then freaking slamming her head before she falls. That shit was clean as fuck. <laughs> no censors at all. Base. I, I mean, I feel like some of that could have been censored. So... Maybe they're like, hey, we're giving you like the worst, sen the biggest censors in uh, in anime history. So how about we just keep the last two episodes clean as um repayment? But anyways, law and battle happened. Rita's finally like, okay, I can't do this. I'm gonna need to bring out my secret weapon, and she hits the Toto with the with her little shard. And I just, just confirmed something, because one of my questions was, does Satoko, does every arch Satoko pull out the sword and it always baits and Rita always gets the shard? And I think the answer is just no. I think it's confirmed now that the, since it's a sword that l kills people within loops, maybe it's like a sword you find in one loop and it travels with you. Because Rita was kind of concealing it within herself, right? Or did she like grab, oh, actually maybe... I don't know, because she went to that place, so maybe she just grabbed it. But I headcanon is it travels with you, because it doesn't really make sense to me that Satoko would break the sword every time. <laughs> it seems a little silly. But Satoko, I mean, I guess, yeah, maybe it goes through 
loops and you kind of need a looper's energy to like activate it because Satoko was just keeping it in uh, the dump so but yes Rika Rika activates the power of the shard she also does a little transformation I didn't notice it at first but she is wearing the Hanyu drip with a new hairstyle well actually it's the it's the hairstyle she wears as a shrine maiden but she's looking super fly with perma red eyes and so Toko's transformation with a, a play on feathering, so a little more green, I think. A little more green colored. Um, with the full sword, so she should be stronger, but I don't, I don't know how this sword works, you know, you don't, we don't know the material. It's just hilarious, actually, that the sword, that this is the sword. Because, again, I mentioned it before, just, to, I just find it super funny that... We learn about the in the visual novel. The only time the sword is mentioned is after you finish, and like after the credits are done, they give you one hint where they talk about the lore of the sword, and it's just like it's literally pointless to the Hidarashi story. So I feel like Ryu Kishi had to have like something in mind with the sword and this story, right? I mean, maybe the sword does come up in um in the side visual novel stuff because I t I haven't read it yet, but. But I, I just find it funny, like, was he, like, planning, like, something like this? Like, like a go light story for a while? I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's good, though. But anyways, I don't know that, like, I know Rika only has a shard, but does that actually mean it's weaker? Or does it matter how big of a piece of the sword you have? Um, But anyways, attacking with the sword and the shard too much made it fuse. And, dude, I love Satoko's kit, man. That was such a smooth kit when you think Rita just has it. And then, like, yeah, it shows them uncontrollably trying to get the sword on looping. No explanation to that. It's either feathering or, again, an overload in looping powers or just too much frequent looping is just causing them to, um, go through worlds without their, or go through fragments without, like, unconsciously, I guess. Feathering gives her a nice little speech about what's happening. You know, both both trying both loopers trying to um inflict death to another, um, but they don't really want to do it because they both their perfect worlds are just um definitely include each other in it. Though like I didn't mention it before, but like oh yeah, when they're taught when they're fighting in Super Saiyan, like the banter, like literally the banter they're giving, it, it's it, it, that's where it honestly reminded me of Keiichi vs. Rena the most. Just for Keiichi vs. Rena, which, uh, you know, I'll be honest, wasn't my favorite visual novel scene. Famously, I remember talking about it in the comments because some people love that scene. You know, for me, it was like a two hour fight with people clapping while. <laughs> while, while watching them like fight to the death. It was, it, it's a very weird scene. But this reminded me of it because they also start randomly bantering in that too. You know, they're fighting to the death and Kate, she's like, oh, remember, remember this time in the club and blah, 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 like stuff like that. Like this is like, you know, you even hear, oh, club rule number two in, in the cute Rita voice, not in her burn voice, uh, stuff like that. Like the banter heavy stuff really drives it home that they're definitely playing Playing off of Keiichi vs. Rena too. Which, to be fair, is like one of the most iconic scenes. To my uh, disagreement. I, I mean, to be fair to that scene, I did like it in anime version more. Just because it's not like two hours long. I, I, maybe I'm over... It's like an hour long, okay? Same with this. I liked it. It's fast-paced. Great anime. Um, I shouldn't need to say it, but great animation. This is like the ritual dance budget, but they're just using it for like the full episode. <laughs> it's really good. And then we end off on the bridge. Rita wins again. Keiichi versus Rena. Keiichi eventually wins. Rena's like, oh, are you gonna kill? Wait, no, wait. Rena wins. Rena wins. Never mind. Never mind. My my an 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 analogy has failed. Um, but you know, Rita's not, I, I don't think Rita's gonna kill Satoko. 
even though she says maybe I should. But it would be interesting if it does happen, just because I think of Umineko and the whole characters of Burn Castle and Lambda Delta is they're kind of chasing each other, specifically Lambda Delta chasing Burn Castle, which makes me think that Burn Castle got really far away from Lambda Delta. To the point where she spent like thousands of years looking for her. Well, maybe not thousands, but like hundreds of years looking for her. I don't, I don't remember the age stuff. So maybe this is what started it. Like Feathering did say that you'll never find, Satoko will never find Rita in another fragment. But it's not like Feathering can really do that, right? She's out there somewhere in the sea of fragments. Kind of like how Han Yu found Feathering, even though she didn't expect it. So I think maybe that, you know, using our Umi Neko knowledge, maybe Rita does kill Satoko and causes her to, like, send her to a place without Rita, whatever. Though, if she uses the sword, it just kills Satoko. But somehow they get, like, separated, and the whole launch is from Umi Neko is, like... And, you know, maybe they find each other all on the way, and then they split up again. Maybe that's all stemmed from a, a lawn chase post Hidarashi, where Satoko's yeeted into the deepest depths of the fray Sea of Fragments, and she finds Rita after a lawn search. I don't know. Something interesting. It would definitely be interesting if that happened. Though at the same time, like, I still think they're gonna have, like, a happy ending, so, like, maybe not. I don't know. Just a possibility that she might actually kill. Although I think it's more likely that she won't kill Satoko. And they'll come back to the Sea of Fragments and help Hanyu beat Feathering. Because I don't think Hanyu's doing it by herself, man. She broke free and Feathering easily countered, so. But anyways, good episode. <laughs> if anything, it was super fun, man. That's what I'm looking for. Just, just fun stuff. Yeah, like I was saying, we'll talk about it more in the anime review since it'll be more. Because I think it is kind of probably a bit um. A bit split, but I think basically their decision to, instead of focusing the season on. Fragments with Rita versus Toko, they kind of exchanged it to show this montage, which kind of exchanges like the dread and suspension, of making it long for like hype and fun by using it in a montage which is better i mean i don't know <laughs> but that's at least my view on um the way they're going through uh the long-awaited satoko versus rika fight right so anyways i think i'll wrap it up there though good good episode pretty uh pretty pretty fun and excited for next episode because how how are we ending this how is hanyu like i can kind of see how rita and satoko are gonna end but how is hanyu and the feathering stuff going to end will hanyu pull out her own miracle will she get help from rita and satoko and will we finally go back to like a happy fragment and see the new drip teased in the opening. All those uh, questions will be answered and more next episode. Last final Sotsu episode. Be there. It should be fun. I will have fun at least. <laughs> but thank you for watching. Have a great day night and see you later. Bye.